welcome welcome to uh, another episode of uh, the book of solace as my voice cracks <laughs> going up to too many registers i finally got some stuff set up for our original group which is super cool um it's not Tales of Peculiar Kin. I gotta fix that because that is outdated and oh my god. I've got their headshots at the very least, which is super cool. Um, we're gonna go ahead and disable that for right now. And uh, I'll have to get that back up later, apparently. I am sleep deprived and trying my best today. But um, I will we'll fix it in post, as they say. But uh, I've got our little headshots of our of our friends here and I'm going to fix one more thing and then we're going to get started because we have a little bit of a late start, but that's okay. Um, let me go ahead and pop this on. We have some stuff in the background for us to listen to while we're getting things kind of sorted. We're going to continue off where we left last time. Let me go ahead and uh, pop in a discord here. The one Oh, there's Doss. Yeah. Is there is there panic happening? Yeah. Why is there yeah. panic? Because Doss said, yeah. "Oh, if I drop, you know, don't worry, give me a second to be back." I was like, "Oh, we'll panic when you're gone." <laughs> Picnic. Okay. So. Okay, so I was I, I, I tried to log in on my phone so I could get on with my computer. And then it kicked me out of my phone, so I was like, well, I don't want that constantly happen. So I logged back in on my phone, and it kicked me out of my computer. I'm, I'm riding the struggle bus, guys. Struggle bus. <laughs> That's okay. But, yes, let me enthrall you with a wonderful, delightful story that happened today at the gym. <clears throat> so anyways. So anyways, I'm, I'm going to a new gym. It's closer to home, a little bit easier for me and all this stuff. I don't know a whole lot of people, though. So I work out in like a corner by myself that no one really goes to or uses or like anything over there. So anyways, they are they have the routine up, like everyone's going through their stuff. And I'm like in La La Land, I'm like, man, I can't wait. Dungeon Dragons, this is going to be fun. Fuck yeah, let's do this. I'm not really paying attention and I can't see the board. So I'm like, this is what I think the workout is. This is what I'm going to do. Meanwhile, it's not at all what anyone else is doing. I just can't see them because I'm in a fucking corner of the room. And the uh, instructor comes over like, what are you doing? You're not you're <laughs> not doing the workout with us? I was like, oh, no, I am. And then I'm looking and everyone's doing effing uh, like box jumps and squats and all this other shit. And I'm like, I have not been doing any of this. I haven't paid any attention. My God, I've done my own workout for like a total of like seven minutes of a 15 minute workout. Because the whole time I was like, man, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be good. I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, distraction by D&D. <laughs> See? See, it's it's the ultimate distraction. you got to be careful. It's not like what they were talking about in the in the early 90s and the 80s where it's like, it's the devil's playground. It's, it's the distraction. That's all it is. Dungeons and distractions. Pretty much. <clears throat> All right, so uh, recap from from last time. What I'll probably do is I'll pull up Tailspire because you because you all were were pretty much resolving that conflict, but at least give you a little bit of a visual about what what's happening there. I'm I'm not entirely sure. We can delve into if anybody wants to join that. Um, we didn't really get time to play around like off stream, which I think we should probably still do at some point in time. But at the very least, we can still have the visual of of you guys being in um, in uh, Salas Salvage and go from there. Uh, but okay. I'm hoping everybody kind of vaguely remembers of what happened. I have notes. I have vague People. memories. <clears throat> have vague notes. Vague, yeah. vague, vague noted memories. Um, I have an idea what happened, but I took no notes. It's all mental notes, which are really terrible. <laughs> that, that's fine. I, I usually do that too. I'm like, yes, Jim, you all fought Jim. And um, <laughs> we're victorious. But I'll, uh, I'll I'll load up Tailspire and pop it on screen right now. We'll go over I stuff. We helped Firefiend. Yeah, Firebean. I remember him. F Firebean. 
<laughs> yes, Firebean. There was, there was a, a goblin named Stanky. Stanky. It's my you boy. Firebean, all I can think of is Beavis and Butthead going, fire, fire. <laughs> oh my god, so my wife introduced me to Beavis and Butthead recently. And, um, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Winged. Slapping, what the hell? And, and whichever one has got the funny voice, uh, and slapping him and him yelling in auto tune was hilarious. What's up? Uh, well, they, uh, Beavis and Butthead has been around for a while, but I know that they've revitalized it at one point in time. They apparently it gives them the just, work now, isn't it? Yeah, they just did. Like it's it's brand fucking new. Like the this update. Like I guess they. What was it, hun? They um fell into modern times essentially. Old Mike Judge keeping yeah. busy in modern day. Yeah, so they, they put out a new movie and new episodes, and it's modern time, essentially, and uh, they are the same, too. Like, everything about them is the same, but it's modern time, and they're just as psychotic as, they, as, as my really mother were. wouldn't let me see them be. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, you had that household. Um, I, I'm the youngest, so I think my parents gave up <laughs> after my two older sisters. They were just like, screw it, whatever. If he ends up messed up, we, we tried our best, I guess. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I do have a little lucky that that way. And I have Telspire up, but I haven't actually done anything other than try to get my mini into it. I just well, what haven't I gotten around to it. Yeah, no, 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 and, that out. and that's fine. Like, I know that, um, I, I could show you real quick. I know it's a kind of a distraction for, but I, I, I kind of figured we're going to be dealing with a lot of role play this, this go about. Um, if you do have it up, I know that if you go to, um, I don't know if you can see it on the screen right now. Uh, if you hit space once you're in, uh, a, an area or a, um, scene, you can go to the leftmost tab and it's basically the beta hero forge um area i know in the settings you have to link it to your hero forge which is like um like an auth code or something of that nature within hero forge that you basically don't want to share with anybody because it links directly to your account um and then oh, you oh, no, i mean I've, I've got him in i just gotta get him into yours oh yeah See, i don't know how that all works necessarily just yet i think I just give you authorization to have a model, and then it basically syncs everything together. Um, uh, no, that, that would make sense. That would be logical. Yeah. So I'm not sure. We could we could try it at a later time. I don't want to delay everything too much, but oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I kind of figure I'll I'll invite you all later. Like I said, I think it's going to be more of a RP heavy session. Uh, but um, you know, you never know. If you all start slicing people, I have to think on the <laughs> think on the uh, on the fly. Uh, but last session we had, it's been a while, I know, but last session we had, obviously, you all got the impression that you needed to um, inquire upon uh, the fire fiend that you know of in town after investigating to find out a person of interest that um, both Artrin and Mist are specifically looking for, uh, but... Um, Asher and, and Saskia, you, you all are basically hard hands to these two um, to try to figure out um, where this individual is. Person of interest. Um, you came upon Salas Salvage where you know a Fire Fiend existed. And uh, without being able to get into too much, you all uh, found uh, someone being attacked. Uh, the owner of the establishment being attacked. So being upright citizens cough cough uh <laughs> you all decided to help him out because it was probably in your best interest at that point in time to kind of clear the tussle and uh figure out what's going on so really we just ended after that um you had uh i think three people are uh are down if not out and um i believe three are still technically conscious um Asher decided to do something very vicious to one of them, so I don't think they are getting back up, period. And I believe Mist may fine. have stabilized one. Yes, I think I remember doing that. Yep. 
poor neck guy. <laughs> but your neck, neck guy, that's his name, honestly. <laughs> Sir Neckley. All right, so let me see here. We had the ones that I had marked is the Elven Barbarian. That is the one that that had the um, very disturbing face caked in blood. And um, Asher decided to make an example out of him. Uh, you have a Seaborn Dwarf. Uh, that is still alive. Um, you have the uh, lizard, uh, lizard folk individual who is uh, bleeding out on the floor. Um, you have a dragonborn uh, who was, for the most part, fighting um, uh, fire fiend, and uh, you all essentially just incapacitated him. He's still alive. And then the uh, human, uh, there's a human like thief looking individual um, who is also still alive in that particular group. So you have a, a, a few captives that are not bleeding out right now. And um, that's pretty much where the, the scene had ended. So let me go ahead and set you all up for um, what's happening now. So your 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 friendly individual fire fiend there uh, is basically dusting himself off from the uh, from what just happened as as kind of like the the fight settles and um, you know he, he's looking around and tries to make sense of it. And Hrotha settles into a nearby chair in the main area of Sala Salvage, adjusting his attire and checking his wounds from the blows he suffered during the altercation. He plunges his uh, he plunges the back ends of his hook swords into the table beside him before gruffly grabbing the wound of his shoulder, muttering a kith incantation under his breath. And uh, I think only a few of you would probably know that. Definitely missed maybe Artrin. Um, his palm glows a fiery orange, washes over the wounds with flame-like tendrils, and the exposed flesh reveals itself a scar where the damage once was. Uh, these hug, uh, these the hugs. I'm sure are more profit. Uh, had more, seen more profitable days. He kicks a nearby body with absolutely no concern if the person is devoid of, or, uh, of life or not. Uh, so what were you here for again? I assumed you might be here for a job. By the way, you all fight. I'd say you're welcome to some jobs if you need them. Um. Wait. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, not that I'm the spokesperson, you know, of uh, this group or anything, but maybe. But, uh, you know, we were just looking to come in and ask some questions and, you know, get to, get to know a few people. And then we saw you were in trouble and uh, we wanted to lend a hand because we were helpful, good people. And we care. Usually when someone says that they're helpful, good people, it's uh, you You have to take that with a grain of salt. So forgive me if I'm a little bit doubtful of any intentions. I do appreciate the help, though. I will take a pinch of salt from my, uh, 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 like, mess kit and put it on the table. <laughs> now I'm going to be channeling tech. That's $20. <laughs> Goodness, uh, he, he kind of just smirks and laughs. It's like, but in in all seriousness, what what all are you all doing here? Is there something that I could help you with? Well, um, Mister Mister Mist, I uh, I think you might be the best acclimated. For uh, for this. Yeah, I'll look at Miss and go. I think we need information. I I will go and pull a uh, or sit on a uh, stool beside him and uh, ask. So I'm looking for someone named Firefiend that I am. Well, it's very likely you found him. I my name is Rotha Firefiend. What, what can I do for you? Is there is this something in relation to business or pleasure or... 
Does it have to be one or the other? <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, I, I, I have a few questions, if you don't mind, and then uh, we'll, we'll be out of your hair, or or maybe even be helpful. This could be mutually profitable. Um, how, how long have you been in the city? Uh, I've been here for quite a few years now, um, after leaving the Bastion. I mean, obviously, you, you kind of understand um, I mean, we have like a, a a leaving the nest scenario that every every uh, ardent goes through, but uh, I uh, after some some uh, family squabblings, I decided to take myself and uh, find life elsewhere. Ah, uh, family squabblings. Family, they can be. They can be so troublesome, can't they? You don't know the half of it. And obviously, you know, outside of that, you, you very likely do understand to a degree what, what he's referring to. I will, uh, I will kind of push the, the brim of my, my little rice hat up a little bit and just kind of do that, that kind of look up stare like that that kind of like that, that thousand yard stare but that, where you're 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 pensive but you're staring through to their soul and go do tell me the half of it how's your brother <clears throat> you see his face kind of like harden like it was it was a little bit more welcoming before um you know he was being a little bit playful in his responses but you could see this is his um his face basically serious is up really really quick when you mention his brother and so and he just replies with what do you want with him well i what i want with him is not necessarily your concern um and before you can continue he literally pounds his fist into the table and like it splits as like fiery sparks uh split off from like his fist and the actual table itself and he just stares at you maybe uh you're a little protective of your brother maybe that fight is mine Maybe that fight doesn't have to just be yours. What do you mean by that? I think your brother hurt a lot of people. <clears throat> oh, I know he hurt a lot of people. He also hurt my family name. What would you be willing to do to have your family name restored? <clears throat> The way I can see it is that the Bastion is not going to forgive my family and their name until he's brought to justice. So I want him either captured or dead. I don't care. And you can see just like he's on the brink of seething with anger. He just, there is this venom that comes out from him every time like you mentioned his brother, you, you mentioned anything of that nature. It, it is definitely a, a sore spot with him. So I, I want to kind of enter, you know, maybe not intervene, but uh, throw in be like, so these uh, friends that uh, we just kind of dispatched and dealt with being that they're, you know, mercenaries and, uh, I'm not that I'm super familiar with them, but just enough that uh, I know, you know, they're willing to do anything for money and they were here wanting money from you. But uh, what were, what were they here for? What are the chances that uh, there's some work you've already wanted done to your brother here? Were you, were you basically wanting to know if they have anything to do with the brother or? Yeah, maybe they're sent from the brother to kill this one. Maybe he sent them to kill him. 
maybe they just came in. I don't know. <clears throat> I figured it's uh, worth a worth a questioning. Uh, he kind of looks to you, and he basically just um, he, he shakes his head a little bit. It's like normally what happens is they try to shake down the establishment for any kind of completed writs. It never usually works out in their favor. Uh, most of the time they go for mercenaries that work for me because they know that if they can catch somebody off guard as they're coming back or whatever it may be, uh, coming back from a job, they're exhausted. Um, that's generally when they hit, but they must have been pretty desperate to come for that. They, they, they were pretty upfront with their demands. I don't think my brother would be so brazen to send anything like this at me. Alright, well, as long as you see kind of why I'm asking. It, uh, it's an odd coincidence, but it is a coincidence. Oh, it, it is. It is. More than you know. So, this also... Bad, man. How many do we have alive? Two of them? <clears throat> uh, three, I believe. Three? Oh my, lucky days. So, this being it is... Being that, you know, we did help you out, you could probably pay it forward a little bit to me and, you know, let me interrogate at least two. Because I would like to ask a question or two myself in the most polite manner, of course. Well, you have a limited amount of time because I'm going to have to let the agency know that these individuals are either expired, expiring, or at least in possession at this point in time. You understand I have to kind of play by the rules in the city, so. Oh, no, I, I understand. I work quick. Don't worry. They'll mostly be expired. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, he'll, 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 he'll turn his back if you're needing to work on it. He's not uh, entirely opposed to that, but they, they will be, he makes it pretty clear that they will be brought to justice in some way, shape, or form. Of course, I, I plan to extract my own justice here in just a minute. Uh, the, uh, what was it? The dwarf that hit me with a mace? Yeah, it's it's time for payback. <laughs> I don't know, I, uh, I'm happy to let the station finish before I, if I need to detail what I'm going to do or anything. Yeah, I mean, like, we can, we can say, like, if Asher wants to <clears throat> take take an individual because you you all pretty much secured it, every individual and made sure that they were tied up and, and are not gonna like run away in the meantime um if you want to like fade to black take them out back or whatever and handle your business you can message me in private what you do or whatever it may be and i can tell you what information you get whereas like mist and the others can continue to talk to Firefiend if they really want to uh, I'm down for that if you guys are. I think you do Saskia you. is currently like pinning down the dwarf, so she just kind of like slowly gets off of him and allows you to take him. <laughs> Little does that dwarf know he should have stayed with the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but yes, yeah, uh, obviously. Um, they those individuals that are still alive understand at least right now begrudgingly that they've been beaten and uh they uh they don't tend to struggle you know the 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 dwarf is is going to go with asher especially if you all still have them kind of tied up and, and restrained in some way shape or form and there's plenty there's plenty of supplies nearby sala salvage is literally a guild for mercenaries so they're gonna have equipment and rope and whatever you need nearby I'm going to, uh, while this is going, I'm going to look back to, uh, to Firefiend. What was Fire, this Firefiend's first name? Uh, Haratha. I'm going to list him under allies for the moment. It's, uh, H-R-O-T-H-A. That was close. <clears throat> I'm going to look at him and say, <clears throat> Haratha. You would like to restore your family name in a much easier way than than you may have been going about it. I think it would help you to have allies 
it would help you to help or it, it would be better for us to work together to find your brother before the shadows of other people do real quick what what are are you wearing right now like um what do you have presenting i guess because it, is it um is there anything that you would perceive well i'll just say this what what are you wearing um before or like before the fight would have started i probably would have put on uh my mask so i'd probably have uh the so i would have changed before uh leaving the the tea the tea house the the the, the shop whatever uh to the robes of the actual mini so i would okay. have these dark uh charcoal to gray to black robes with teal with the rice hat i'd put on kind of a sinister mask that kind of says i'm going to work okay um he's uh let me give me one second i'm gonna do something for him we'll give him the chance here i was considering asking how much he would know or if he had heard like of the the whispers of, of the shades or anything like that or not Um, after he gets a, a better look, especially after you've tipped up your, uh, your hat, your rice hat, he, uh, gets a better look at, at your mask and kind of narrows his vision at you. And he, he kind of nods a little bit. He's like, I, I think I know who you are. Or at least what you do. I do many, many things, but right now one of those things may be helping you. Let's hope it's not the same exchange that I had back in the Bastion. And if you are indeed here to help me, then I want to bring my brother to justice. I'm tired of this curse hanging over the Firefiend name. Justice is all we see that it is so you know for a fact that you you have never obviously encountered these individuals before but after kind of him seeing your mask you kind of get the impression that he's had exposure to someone of your organization before even in brief and it probably was not the most pleasant of exchange well I was jotting that down Uh, let me see here. All right, we'll let uh, we'll let Asher do his thing. Like I said, in in fade to black, um, so he can just message me that at any point in time, and I will tell. Right. I'll I'll tell you what is I'm revealed. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you take your time. You're good. Um, meanwhile, uh, Artrin, your little your little rat fella kind of exposes himself and perks up on on your head just to kind of like scurries out of your pocket and climbs up a little bit and now that the the action is done kind of looks over the crowd and sits as he just kind of observes or they just observe what's going on well i'll just kind of look up at him and, and get adjust for what he's doing and see if he had like a puzzled look on his face i guess could be like what's going on uh, the the little rat just kind of like cleans his paws off, you know, uh, almost like it's fixing its its fur to a degree um, on its head because it was kind of tucked into the, the security of one of your inner pockets, and uh, just just looks around. Oh, well, I'll reach up with a little claw and just kind of scratch his chin a little bit. He kind of like pushes into it a little while. Uh, the other, the other two that are still alive and there are uh, just kind of mumbling as uh, Firefiend pushes them into the corner. 
I think it's that one, and I believe that one. Yeah, those two are dead. And then uh, our friend here has disappeared with Asher. I would say they're probably out back, so you you all see, saw them exit out a back entranceway. Um, but Pratha basically just uh, uh, takes takes those two and drags them over to the the side of Sala Salvage and just kind of stands by them as uh, as you all continue to talk. Uh, but he he motions to uh, Mist again. He's like, well, what are you proposing? I'm proposing a symbiotic relationship. Help us find your brother to bring him to justice. And I, in turn, make sure that your family name <laughs> is cleared. Yeah, <clears throat> he looks to the... Uh, the one dragonborn that was seemingly the leader of the of this group and he goes the last thing that I know is that my brother had dealings with these idiots and he just like f hauls off and kicks this dude in his ribs <laughs> as he's tied up laying down in the corner not so much to like permanently uh permanently mess him up uh he's not intending to you know curb stomp this guy to death but he definitely makes sure that he he, he feels uh the the aggression in his tone from this whole ordeal um and uh he just mentions that they're from the uh at least they should be hires from the uh the mist's fortune and he uh he actually like pulls up one of the sleeves um because generally he goes on to explain he's like Normally, these idiots have tattoos of some kind um, to signify that they are working for this particular the, the misfortune. They give like magical tattoos, and you know, once once their um, uh, their job is done, their the the magical tattoo will essentially disappear. It dissipates. It's made with a aether. They have a tattoo artist on on hand, and. I don't really deal with it too much. Obviously, we're of a different crowd here. These idiots will do anything for money. And the other, the, the two that are still alive just kind of like grumble a little bit as they, as he keeps, <laughs> keeps calling them idiots. <laughs> Wait, the misfortune, what is the, the tavern that I work at? So you all normally partake at the boisterous bard. Uh, That's right. The misfortune is fairly close to the boisterous bard, but it is technically in the working district. So boisterous bard is like on the border of the market district and the uh, and the working district, which is like the shadier parts of town. And um, uh, they're they're very fairly close to one another. Um, but uh, you probably haven't been there. I think the only person it, that would have any more possible knowledge about the situation is busy right now out back fair enough and do we know the brother's first name or just fire fiend as the brother uh he hasn't I mentioned know. his his uh brother's name yet gotcha but you know you assume he has that information <laughs> I, I do i don't want to push him too far too fast either that's fair. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, go ahead. You got you got my info. Of what I'm doing. Yeah. Give me one second. Let me read over so, real quick. I read the novel. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good. Oh, while you read, I'll look at Archon. Do you have anything you'd like to say or ask, my friend? I think at this point you're covering everything we need. Uh, as long as we get what we're looking for, I think we're making good progress. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> just going over this real quick. You're good. Take your time. 
I'm at sipping this, on coffee. Yeah, at this point, Miss, I, I just want progress. Just want progress. I just Sasuke is to you. Sasuke is just like listening to them, their conversation as she's going about. I believe she had a couple missed arrows, so she's going around and pulling those out of the walls and checking them over and putting them back in her quiver. Roger that. I like to imagine as, as you're doing this, Sasuke is like the ears are doing like the cat thing where they're yes. just kind of perking up, going around <laughs> everywhere as all the sounds are happening. Yes. <laughs> Somebody drops a fork in the back and she's like, huh. <laughs> like, like that one ear does that little flick to the side. When, um, when Firefiend like slammed his hand on the table, I imagine she probably poofed up. <laughs> it's the the fur on her. <laughs> like the the tail with like the yeah. uh, like the like the, the 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 skinny fur tail just suddenly looked like a, a like a Persian's tail for a minute. It's, it's yep. her talking oh, emote. Right. It's her talking <laughs> emote that we'll see later. That's that's what happens. She's like <laughs> <laughs> Uh but yeah, you uh I I'll I'll say I'll say this. You probably caught uh, this is for Sasuke. You probably caught wind of some noise outside um, momentarily before uh, Asher kind of returns on his own. Oh boy. When I come back, like, man, I can't believe I dropped that bag of snacks. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to be hungry for the rest of the day, guys. Always the snacks. I'm glad you guys have all your snacks. I lost mine. You're welcome, by the way. Day. I shed a single tear for the snacks lost this day. I forget how many jerkies that Saskia has, but she would probably give Asher one of hers. <laughs> now, if, if you want to fade out and actually play out the, the scene of the questioning and all the stuff that went out, feel free to. Oh, it's uh, mm, let's keep that <laughs> behind. I want I want Asher to to uh, have that in private. <laughs> OK, <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just for TOS reasons. Oh, <laughs> oh they're, that bad. They were, they were making out back there. I'm just I'm not going to ruin it. In my I best knew George it. Decay. You know, for a little guy, he's a great kisser. <laughs> <laughs> just the right height. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? That was right, no steps still needed. He was perfect. <laughs> Giga D. Uh, but, like, you can see Haratha, as as everyone starts to progressively notice Asher coming back in, Haratha kind of side-eyes eye, side eyes him uh, walking back in, and uh, just, um, he just, you know, kind of wonders what's what's going on there. At least you can see that he's just kind of questioning what's happening. Astro would just smile and like wave, like, all right, well, everything's taken care of. A big sigh of release, just, I feel better. Everything's better. We're okay now. Uh, he, he looks to, or Firefiend Ratha looks to, uh, to someone, and he's like, if you wouldn't mind, would you, well, I have some, I have some, uh, courier birds out back if you wouldn't mind could you watch some of these individuals and uh you know i have to go send a message obviously to the agency to let them know that something needs to happen with these i uh i'll step forward and i will i'll look i'll <clears throat> i'll offer to do so i'll just kind of nod to him and i'll be i'll happily do it. We have entered into a partnership as far as I'm concerned. He just kind of nods after looking looking over everybody, and he keeps an eye on Asher as he kind of walks out towards the back. Wait, is he going to see what I just did? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. You know what? He slipped. He fell. There was nothing I could do. He knew what was happening. <laughs> He's just as guilty as I am of a crime that didn't happen. 
why do I get the feeling that if we looked out back, we'd see somebody who would need to be put back together like a Lego person? Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Age is six and up. We're all above that. We're good. Don't worry about it. So after a few assuming moments, uh, Haratha does come back, and he just... He, those that are paying attention do notice that he still keeps an eye on Asher, but he doesn't say anything. Um, and he comes back over to the original spot of, you know, watching these these dum-dums. Um, and uh, he just makes mention that the the courier bird has been sent. And uh, the agency will likely be here shortly. If, uh, if you all have no dealings with the agency, which... Um, I would assume some of you probably don't want to deal with this. I suggest uh, you uh, you skedaddle. I have a question. Do you, these guys that are still alive and kicking, are they saying anything? Are they mad at us? Oh yeah, they're they're pissed. Uh, they're they're not really saying anything really terribly constructive. Um, just that you know we're gonna get you. You'll never get away with this, you you kids. You know, typical Scooby Doo villain stuff. I want to well, walk. I mean, there. they're wearing masks. <laughs> Let's take his face off, Asher. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Who's uh, really under this mask? Hmm. It's just oh my God, his face. <laughs> Please, it's something. just his face. Uh, but no, no. I mean, they're they're generally gruff and pissed. They're not gonna say too much. They don't, they're not necessarily wanting to uh, to speak uh, at, at this point in time in depth with anybody here. They're just pissed off that they a couldn't get their writs um, that they were trying to obviously get and lost some some hands in the process. I want to go over to Sosuke and be like, hey, if you want to take a few practice shots with your bow, I'm not gonna tell anybody. They're just right there. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Who are they going to tell? This. The cops? They're getting yeah. arrested. Having heard this, I'll, I'll kind of look at look at him and be like, I don't think that's appropriate at this time. But I can make target practice uh, statues if you would like. <laughs> <laughs> Training dummies? Yeah, why not? I like to whittle, so go for it. Yeah, that might be handy. If we ever maybe get a base someday or something. Um, Mist, that is probably plausible for, for you to arrange. Wait, what? I didn't say anything. I know. He was talking about a base of operations. Oh, yes. I was, yeah, sorry. I was deep in thought on how to set up a way for this guy to communicate with us to when, for like, when we leave, for him to say, hey, he's ready to talk and, and move on, move forward with this relationship, you know, take it to the next level. Uh, <laughs> was, oh. Dinner first, okay, and then you go from there. <laughs> Coffee, come on, so at least start with that. <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking uh, uh, to just tell tell him to come to the, uh, uh, the boisterous bard and ask for a certain tea, and um, uh, I'd have an aide uh, serve him and, and speak with him on my behalf to set something up, which would actually just be me without a mask. But, um, or to send a messenger to the to the tea house. Yeah, that, that would be so much more. You know, uh, yeah, you know those words, the, <laughs> the words of affirmation. There, yep, those. Yes, agreed. Yes. <laughs> yes, do that, please. Yeah, whatever, whatever you think it, it works. Like if you if you want him to reach out at that point in time you know he he doesn't seem disinterested with the idea from what you can tell you know uh, obviously it seems like this is pretty important to him um and uh the the idea of working with someone from the bastion to clear his name his family's name is seems pretty important and then uh I'll look at it at Hrotha and say two things then, Hrotha. Number one, constantly calling him your brother will probably get tiring. What is his name? Uh, that has been a, a, a tiring subject for me for quite some time, but if you need to know his his full name, it is Rajas 
Firebane or Firefiend. I'm doing Firebean. <laughs> oh no! Explodes. And to spell it, it's R A J I S. Thank you. That is Rajas is going to be so much more easy than, than constantly saying your brother. Uh, and two, when you're fire after, foot, when you're ready and this is all handled and everything, just send a messenger to the boisterous bard uh, with a message that you'd like to meet. Uh, just have them send the message to Vesper. And with that, I will turn and begin to walk to the door. All right. He just kind of nods, and uh, obviously you'll... He, he has courier birdie birds out back. Um, Asher, you, you can confirm they're basically falcons. Okay. Ooh, birds. Ooh, birds. <laughs> Don't get oh, any no. ideas, Saskia. <laughs> God, we're just like surrounding her with prey. She's just gonna go <laughs> ape shit and murder everything. Wait, did I actually make that thing that we talked about? Do I do I need to use it? <laughs> uh oh. Wait, uh, what? Did you make a squirt bottle? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not quite, but we're we're, we're, we're get you're getting there. You're getting there. You're you're warm. <laughs> uh, but with that. He, he kind of nods and he says, I, I would definitely leave. The agency is, is going to be here pretty soon. They're, whenever they know that something has happened, they, they're pretty reactive and they don't, they don't take kindly to any extra individuals around. So, so before I leave, I'm going to walk out and be like, Mr. Firemean, we both know he fell, that trash can. And then I just want to like whistle and walk. He just goes, I would leave. I think you're right. I'll stand up and, and give a slight little bow. And is that a bag of snacks that uh, Asher dropped still on the floor? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, I'm going to pick some crumbs up and like hand them to the rat on my head. See if he wants any. Uh, the rat definitely partakes. Sweet. I'll take as a little long, bit as more. long as it's like crackers yep. and stuff, you know. It's like... Yeah, I'll grab some of the, the basic stuff that I know they would eat. I'll grab a little handful and walk out. Okay. All right. It wasn't a total loss. Hell yeah. Just give my thumbs up as I walk out. A <laughs> hey. fawns it as you leave. Exactly. All right. So as you exit, uh, exit uh, Solace Salvage, you uh, obviously go back to the streets of the working district and um, it starts to uh, become like later in the afternoon and uh, you know, the, the, the daylight starts to fade a little bit more and more and um, really it's up to you as, as far as where you want to go from here. Well, my, uh, my task has been complete. Um... I call that good work for the day. What, what would you guys like to do? And I might, uh, while we're walking and kind of discussing this, I'm going to actually turn my robe in, uh, inside out so that I'm in the, like a different colored kind of external attire. I'm going to remove the mask. So I, I'm just, you know, take the hat off. So I, I look more like a, a less uh, ominous creature. <laughs> as, as ominous as a tiny goblin uh, would be. <laughs> Less conspicuous. That's the word. <clears throat> I feel like so, a nice soft green. I would assume just as as a, a point of story, uh, for the moment you all are probably held up in the boisterous bard for the most part. They do have a separate housing area that is uh, like a detached uh, dormitory, just so to speak, behind it. Um, and it's separate from the rooms that are actually in the boisterous bard, uh, which are a little bit nicer, but um, they are cheaper. And because you all don't have a permanent like residence right now within the city, you're likely in, in those in that detached dormitory. Um, so you have a place to go and to rest and recuperate if need be. It's not exactly the best, um, but it is something. Um, that you all can rest your heads at and and feel 
you know, <laughs> feel rested when it comes down to it. Walking. Um, does Mist speak Orc? Hold on, I may. I would think so. I, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna say that whatever culture that you you grew up in, you definitely have the ability to to speak it. I don't like limiting people. That I mean, it's a you know, it's if it's your native language, it's your native language. Yeah, it's one of the ones I took. I was just wondering if Mist has it as well. Yeah, yeah, he, he most likely would. All right, so then, do you have it? I mean, I'm gonna go with I, I'm gonna go with it since I, I grew up, I grew up in that area, so I'm gonna say I probably do. That's what I thought. So in Oregon, I'll, I'll kind of look at him and say, "Do you think this will actually lead anywhere?" I think it will. Uh, actually, ooh, can, it's a little retroactive, but can I roll an insight check to see how, if I if I feel like I believe he was sincere about wanting to to clear his name? Sure, you could. Yeah, you can roll that. I, I don't mind you rolling that. Like you're, you're kind of going back and analyzing the, the speech and whatnot that Firefiend was using. Uh, okay. First roll. <laughs> roll a one. Oh, Ooh, sweet. Uh, well, you, you are definitely not sure. Like you, I think their adrenaline was probably still hitting during that point in time. So you're not entirely able to discern what. You know, if he was lying, if he was actually being truthful, you're still kind of on that edge of, I still need to gauge to see whether this person is sincere or not. I'm just going to shrug my shoulders and say, ah, I'm not super sure, but at this point, it is kind of the best we've got. Well, I really hope it leads somewhere. I'm, I'm itching to, to see what this comes from. I really want to want to do this and i thank you again for joining me friend no you are most welcome our our goals align and uh it would be just it would be justice for for you and for everyone so let's let's hope this leads somewhere yes let's uh give him a little little pat on the i guess i guess technically be back of the head because he's short <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> true my little goblin ears just kind of bounce around a little bit so while this is happening, there like that whole speech, everything happened in a language that I have no idea what happened. I'm assuming Sosuke also doesn't. Sosuke. Yeah, no. like both of you probably don't speak ardent. I don't think you you do. Um, so yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. No, nope, I think it's Elvish and Sylvan for me. Oh, so you, basically you speak, yeah, uh, the elves in the eastern region and elves in the western region <laughs> and and common so i want to poke says or sasuke and be like i have no idea what's happening right now <laughs> yeah she looks very perplexed and curious about what they're talking about but the real question here right now is do we need more snacks we should probably rest and get more snacks I think one of us was injured. Me. <laughs> I got hit too. Yeah, I think a few of you got oh, hit. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, he fucking bit my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. He was, he was like on the ground most of the time, and then he finally actually grabbed one of you. Uh, which Whoa. is which is good. We Builds character. That one is a pet. He was scary. No, I bashed his face in. <laughs> I yeah. got angry when he bit me, I bashed his face in. Yeah, our, our turn went <laughs> fucking uh, Mr. Hyde on him. Well, well since uh, <laughs> we're heading to rest and stuff, when we get to the market district or pass by the market district, I would like to try and uh, see if I can get a little bit of money and some snacks for everybody again. And it's not too late. The, obviously, the 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 daylight is fading, but it's not oh, so late yeah. that uh, everything should still be open for the most part. You start to notice that, you know, it really all depends on how involved with you uh, are in not only just the culture in general, or if you um, if your character in particular decides to dabble in a lot of widely used holidays, but you start to notice that. Um, there are like a lot of 
lights and lanterns lit that aren't generally lit before they seem to be like extra almost like paper lanterns that are lit on each individual doorway especially in the working district but definitely as you move through it uh, to the market district as well and uh you start to see some mostly younger individuals like children and whatnot they have this uh what looks to be like these masks on like paper mache masks that are in the shape vaguely of like a skull and they're uh, covered in like autumny colors that you can envision so very like a lot of vibrant oranges and reds and browns that basically decorate it painted in specific ways but you see these kids kind of running around and um kind of having fun just kind of you know being kids in the streets um chasing each other shouting uh playing essentially like what is tag um with these like funny looking masks on and um if you feel like your character would would be engrossed in at least the some of the traditions of say or some of the world you're more than welcome to roll, roll like a knowledge religion check i want to say why we're why we're walking and going past all this it starts to kind of cause a little bit of anxiety so i want to say that uh start doing like a monk chant but in draconic okay i think maybe it's ascia it would not be familiar at all being from the woods <laughs> probably not you probably have more localized um knowledge of like cultural traditions and things like just stuff passed down from family rather than something a little bit more widespread mm -hmm. i rolled an 18 i don't know how how in depth i would be but i know that i tend to to roam the streets from time to time and kind of like uh, uh, tend to children who skin their knees and, and things like that anyways. Uh, you know with an 18 that this is uh, the start of the celebration of the Lord of the Fall. And the Lord of the Fall is it's kind of a, a you know, double entendre there. Uh, it's a shifting in, in the uh, weather that happens, but also the fall represents um, like death and dying. So this uh, this Lord of the Fall uh, petty god, as as it's norm com commonly known as, usually represents a, a cycle. Um, you you go through the cycle. You meet the Lord of the Fall, like you like say in what we would recognize as death, and it's the natural way of doing this. So it's nothing to be feared. It is something to be celebrated. We all go through that particular cycle. And it is something that is to be welcomed to a degree in a in a healthy manner. Um, so you can you can tell like these kids are embracing this idea that you know in order in order to die you must live first. So they're celebrating, and um, you see that kind of prevalent throughout the streets. That everybody seems very happy. It it does look like it's a uh, a very odd way of celebrating life to wear skulls as a reminder, but. You know, obviously in, in the real world, the, there's many cultures that have done that in the past as well. Um, so it's just a it's just a little um, beautiful reminder that everything does have a beginning and an end. So fill it with with things that make memories and and uh, live your life to the fullest. So since Asher kind of has a strong uh religious i guess base should i i rolled a, a religion and i got six should i roll deception to act like i'm happy and like oh that's nice despite i'm like and y'all don't understand y'all 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 don't understand the real god here <laughs> uh for for you you're um i would say that you probably understand the um like what's going on but maybe it just doesn't really have that much cultural significance for you like it doesn't you you understand that li a death is a part of life but maybe it just hits differently so to speak for you i'm there but uh just that's it i'm just there yeah you, okay you're a bit i would say asher is definitely a bit more jaded when it comes to this particular scenario it reminds Saskia of uh, probably in her family or, or village 
of celebrating like the the life that's being given up by the prey that they get. Okay, yeah. And there's going to be like little colloquialisms depending on where you come from too. Smaller villages and other areas have different things that are celebrated. Um, and you may have someone in your culture that may resemble the Lord of the Fall because, you know, each each kind of culture has their own interpretation or um, their own like spirit or representation of a petty god. Um, so the Lord of the Fall is just what this particular area generally believes in when it comes to um, the the spirit or individual that helps usher the uh, individuals to uh, to the afterlife. Um, you all start to see posters as well um, as you make your way back to the market district of uh, what looks to be a gathering in the ossuary, which is uh, basically the the town's graveyard. Um, and there seems to be a like a Lord of the Fall ceremony that's going to be held at the ossuary tonight. Is that something we are interested in? Ponder to the group. I'm fine with that. That I am. I'll. Uh... I'll take that time to to look around as we go, because Mist is kind of keeping his eye out for um, locations or places that are isn't a dorm, essentially that could actually be home. Um, you could set up shop to to be a base slash you know his own little apartment to uh, to to for everyone to gather. Um, so uh, I I. I I would just use this as a time to scope things out as we travel to and from. Okay. And you probably notice some, some places uh, within the working district. So there's kind of a trade-off, right? Um, with, with your type of connection that you would have, you could likely get something in either the working or even the farming district uh, fairly easily the the trade-off would be that it's not going to be it'll be more obscure but less secure if that makes sense right so you're going to be in districts that don't normally have a lot more securities at their disposal but you'll be able to blend in more because it's you know there's typically the populace is a bit more dense there and you could probably be more discreet in those particular areas um there is another chance that you could probably secure something in the market district. It's a little bit more in the face of the city, but uh, it would be more secure because the agency typically patrols those areas a lot more frequently. Yeah, I think the uh, less secure area is better for this group. <laughs> more more discreet. <laughs> yeah, especially with Ash or bringing in who knows what. <laughs> Hey, I'm not the one that brought in a mouse pet, okay, buddy? Mm. Oof. He picked me. He picked me. <laughs> Trouble in paradise already. Session two, people. Come on. We fight in the streets now. <laughs> I, I challenge you to a duel. Uh, but yeah, you, you all are welcome to uh, peruse the shops. You can, uh, if you need to, feel like you need to buy some more things. I know that likely... Um, Saskia, whenever you go out and you go to the, the nearby forest, uh, you can get provisions. It's nothing like super fancy, obviously. It's just whatever you can grab, whether it be wild veggies and, and grain mixed with uh, meats that you can hunt. Um, it's nothing like, you know, Michelin star <laughs> cooking at the end of the day, but it is something that can sustain you. So if you want more creature comforts, uh, you know, obviously they'll be located more so in the shops in, in town. So uh, rangers are awesome when it comes to help helping sustain groups, especially in the wilds. But obviously you're in the city. Um, you can choose to partake in the basics or if you wanted to, you can splurge a little bit of RP money because I'm not going to charge you all for that to discover some more shops and go from there. So uh, since Asher has a background with leatherworking and uh, 
They can, you know, some okay armor, not great. I would uh, like to impose on Sosuke be like, hey, how about uh, we go hunting? Uh, I'll help do whatever I can if you're willing to, you know, maybe shoot a deer or something. You know, we'll tan it up. You can have the meat. I'll take the skin. We'll sell it. Everyone will win. And we all have money. Oh my gosh, Sasuke is so excited about that. He's like, yes. Let's go. <laughs> Get me out of this city. <laughs> you you all could probably make the trip and make it back. It'll be a little bit later than when the event starts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you would miss it entirely. Um, knowing how fast you can um, you can navigate things, um, especially outside of the city, uh, you you would be fine. Uh, to to do that and make it back as long as the the wildlife uh, are <laughs> accepting of you uh, being nearby I guess yeah should I roll something to see if I catch something yeah let's um we'll say that you two you two uh part part ways from the other two and then obviously mist and archer and if you're wanting to do something in particular at the same time we can do two birds with one stone I, I personally have no no goals at the moment, so Archer, and it's up to you. If not, I think I'd probably go back to the Boisterous Bard and uh, either chill or just kind of tidy up and help out to see if people are wanting to eat and whatnot before the festivities start. So that, that's about all I got. Yeah, I think I think go back to Boisterous Bard and, I'm, and I can just work on some whittle because I want to see if I can maybe sell them. Uh, all right, missed just as a pause the next roll you have uh, you will uh you, you'll basically get um inspiration on it um so you can have like an extra i forgot what it is the extra d uh we'll say it's a d6 to your roll dang fancy because intercopter in chat decided to uh, redeem a pc inspiration bonus for you Ooh, yay chat Oh, well, thank you. So just keep it in mind. Next, next roll that you want to do or that you want to use it on. Must find sticky notes. <laughs> <laughs> roll. <laughs> oh, you said uh, we would roll to see if we caught anything in the hunt. Yeah, it would basically be survival, and you could you can aid Saskia if you want. Especially, I would assume her role is probably better than yours when it comes to survival, especially out in the wilderness. So I'd give you yeah. adva- I'd give her advantage on the role with you helping her. Okay. Oh, I roll. Okay, that's a seven. I thought it was a one. I was like, well, not much help. Well, you wouldn't have to roll, which is good. Um, you yeah. just basically give her uh, another chance to roll. So. Ask you if you want to roll again. Sure. If you get higher, obviously the higher the better. Oh. Oh my oh, god. Dang. Oh shit. All right, so Saskia puts her dip in um, and her <laughs> trucker hat on, and she spots herself a good old d- a ten point buck uh, out in the wilderness. And uh, yeah, Kona. <laughs> K- 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 hell yeah, brother. Guessing yourself on her. Show me that butthole hat, and she goes out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah you, you you both of you um obviously go into the local nearby woods which tends to be pretty good it's not as uh breaming with life as like your forest back home saskia there's there's a different feel to it but it's at least still the wilderness and uh you you tend to find or you did find a set of hoof prints that led you to essentially a uh, a 10 point buck so to speak a just a, a, a very large male deer um that uh that seems to be old enough um uh, but not like super super aged um like not uh, like, like geriatrically aged deer it seems to be of a of a comfortable health that you could assume it's probably had some years of mating um without worrying about you know negatively impacting any kind of populace in the area Uh, but it's pretty big, pretty big. Did I roll for 
shooting at it as well, or do we'll, we just? We'll say we'll say roll for attack. The you're you're going to to uh, get this deer regardless. Um, the attack roll will determine how well you how well of a shot you hit to preserve the meat in the skin. I'm trying to remember how to do that. Would it just be like my longbow? Yeah, yeah, just a ranged attack. Okay. With your longbow. Oh my god! Oh, dang, that oh. All right, yeah. <laughs> so you you definitely hit it in such a way that it's uh, uh you you basically pierce right through the heart. One shot, it goes down. You you don't let it suffer. It it's it's a pretty quick and clean kill. And uh, Asher, you are scaroused would be the appropriate term oh um, my god look at her go <laughs> oh oh uh it is quite a kill that she gets and uh you can you can see that uh obviously even though the pelt is going to be pierced in one way um it is it is going to be very very usable when it's all said and done especially with the meat um still vastly intact so you, you all can take some time um, and butcher the animal on the outside and do it, uh, you know, do it as respectfully as you want and, uh, you know, bring in as much meat as you can carry. Yeah, I think she nice skillfully guy. uses her dagger and claws to to butcher the deer. And uh, tanning like actual getting the hide and everything off pretty quick, but tanning it and getting it into good, useful state, everything like that takes time. So, uh, I guess I just do that for a while. I don't have any like money coming in from it right away, but I can always be like, Sosuke, that was a fucking amazing shot. Do you need gloves? Do you need anything? Like you need any sort of leather, something that I can produce out of this. You get first, first cuts, what you need. Hmm. I'm not sure. Mm. She has very, cold. very basic leather gear. Um, that's probably pretty ragged um, with high use. So, um, <laughs> I know, Rin. And not wanting to take up too much of the hide. Uh, I think probably gloves would be nice. Cover the beans. I was going to say. If you need to, we can put a little hat and I'll make little ear folds for your head ears and uh, it'll be a cool hat. Uh, but gloves, I, I can do some gloves. Yes. Yeah, I think gloves would be Kitten preferred. mittens. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna make some kitten mittens. Let's go. Nice. Oh, all right, so you all start to prep that stuff, and obviously you have good, clean cuts of meat. You can either a prep for yourself or sell on the market in some way, shape, or form. There are butchers in town. Um, there's also, um, you know, leather workers that are always looking for uh, more raw materials. If you have anything to spare, if you wanted to sell that in any in any way, uh, but yeah, you you all can do what you need to do. Clean up in a nearby. Uh, fork of the river and uh head back as as soon as you can i'll i'll cut to the other two so mist and archon what, what were you all doing i know that miss said that uh you know heading back to the boisterous part is is likely uh likely the the case here at least for him yeah i can't think mist has uh much in the way of desires in terms of like needing to buy anything uh in terms of equipment or anything like that so he'd probably just go back and and actually probably just rest up a bit and kind of go to work i guess kind of help help out before the celebration starts okay uh Arjun, what was what was your plan it doesn't have to be anything substantial just anything you think Arjun would do especially with his newfound ratty friend yeah I'd probably go back as well and, and sit and relax and you know, work on whittles and, and enjoy the, the quiet corner that I could find 
Okay, that's fair. And it obviously at night, or at least when the sun starts to set, the boisterous bard gets a little bit louder. But you can still try to find a relatively peaceful corner. I don't. It's not. Uh, despite the name, it is not a raucous area. There's typically not many fights at the boisterous bard. It's just eh, usually steadily, um, steadily entertaining with the music and and bards that are on display from night to night. Um. You do notice, Mist, that you, um, uh, Magnus, who is one of the bartenders, he's the dwarven bartender that usually works, uh, usually night times, uh, comes to you and, uh, he lets you know that there is a note for your friend, uh, your feline friend, uh, waiting for her. Uh, but they they're gonna hold it at the bar um, but if you wanted to give it to her you're more than welcome obviously because you work there but he just wanted to bring it to your attention that uh, there was there was a note there I'll uh, I'll give him a little bow and then I'll go uh, I'll thank him and go collect it you are not I would say a hundred percent familiar with um, how it's presented um, y you've seen seals from other locations and whatnot um especially other cultures but this is a little bit different um it is uh bound up in in what looks to be leather and tied with uh, almost like a vine um a very green uh like plant it surrounds it in such a way that usually it's not natural to see it like that uh, I mean, you're just familiar with with typical vines that you know. W if you tie a knot in it or try to tie a knot in a in a vine, usually it splinters and breaks. And uh, but this is something different, um, and it doesn't obviously look from this particular area. Definitely not from someone in the city that would have sent it. Um, it definitely looks like it's something from uh, from farther away than what you're currently at. I will take note of the very very wonderful craftsmanship of this and then i will put it in the uh, the sleeve pocket of my robe and keep it nice and safe un until saskia arrives all right now that said if there if i find that there is absolutely nothing left for me to do uh then i would probably wander the streets just locally around the boisterous bard uh just kind of wander around a little bit and you know, if I see anybody hurt or injured probably kind of tend to them or send them off to like a, a whatever passes for an infirmary but just kind of watch it's, it's, a, it's a thing that Mist likes to do he likes to just observe people which is kind of comes with being short just it's easy to walk around and not be noticed as you just watch people and be fascinated by the comings and goings of life so he probably do that too if, if there was nothing else to do and yeah aside from maybe prepping some stuff you're you typically speaking for at least for mist the mornings would probably be more prevalent where his um uh his skills are more put to use of course like brewing in general when it comes to the specific like alcoholic brews of of the bastion you would be relatively accustomed with doing at least some of the basic ones. You maybe not, you know, it really all depends on how you perceive, uh, I guess, missed skill in that particular area uh, unfolds. Um, I, I feel like maybe he uh, more so presents himself as a tea maker rather than like a, an alcoholic beverage individual. Um, Pretty much. But alcohol will probably be the absolute most basics of basics, but probably a lot more in the fanciful teas. Yeah, and, and, and on that note as well, you can prep that stuff at any point in time, like the, the ales, the like bastion ales and things like that. And they just, you could set it and forget it for the most part. So it's not something that requires your your uh, intricate attention and, and like expertise to craft, unlike a lot of those teas especially like the fire bloom tea that you crafted last time um so normally at night time you're not needed as much um so you're you're more than welcome to do what you need to do there uh, lucas who runs the boisterous part is not going to necessarily pay you to wait tables because you're much more valuable making those specific teas rather than just waiting tables 
you're too expensive to just be like here serve these tables <laughs> so he he has other people do that for him rather than you uh so when it comes to like the nighttime crowd and and serving the those like rowdy individuals you typically don't have to deal with it you mostly just you know brew your specialties in the morning sometimes midday and uh that's that's kind of like your quote unquote day job yeah i figure the rest of the time he kind, he might would wander around just to kind of get a feel for things because i kind of still need to really get settled in and understand the city this city in particular yeah and, and you can go out and obviously expose yourself to to the populace that is and it, it, it is very much so a lively city like it it isn't the bastion bastion is is something different obviously home home always is a different place but um uh, solace itself is is nice in regards to being able to see all walks of life kind of come together to, to some degree and um you know that 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 kind of exposure to one another you never really got in the bastion because it is obviously very heavily ardent populated um whereas solace has you know all walks of life you're you're working with all walks of life right now and uh, you can see that is kind of like ingrained in the culture of solace itself when you see kids of all different cultural backgrounds playing with one another and people just enjoying the 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 waning light with one another in like local uh like local parks um because i'm sure there's actually a local park nearby not only this location but also probably where you're going to be going to later tonight um so you get to just kind of observe and and see that most people in this city aren't what you've been dealing with so far um and it's it's kind of refreshing to be able to see that uh life isn't just full of fighting and hardship and hardships and healing the wounds of others it it can be filled with a lot of beautiful things that sometimes you take for granted um during your 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 daily life refreshing yeah exactly on that note let's go ahead and take like five ten minute break we'll use the bathroom go reload any any miller lights after killing your 10 point bucks um and uh <laughs> then we'll we'll continue on from there i'm a pbr man <laughs> pbr just don't shotgun it be <laughs> shotgun it oh my god all right so uh five ten minutes however long you guys need and then we'll come back and play more oh, oh boy people ripping <laughs> hey ren hey hey omitted hey uh everybody else in chat i and and um let's see sky good to see you here sky copter thank you for the points redemption thank you all so much for for stopping by first and foremost and all those gift subs and all this other stuff that you all are doing you're all beautiful and lovely and uh i i hope you're enjoying just the story right um this is something that I always enjoy doing, and um, I always encourage my players to communal storytell as well. And um, I hope I hope everybody's having fun. Uh, I'm gonna go use the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back, and we'll talk a little bit more before we continue on with this little lovely journey this group is on. I'll be right back. Fry that chicken.
Oh no. Mist is... <laughs> Mist it becomes the, the solace flasher. Flashing his beepus to everyone. What? What is happening? Sorry, I'm checking. I'm checking. Checking my Discord. People are freaking out. I've got a visual of him doing the Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Stupid. No! <laughs> Happy birthday to you. This little goblin. Oh my god, no. That was in Gremlins. That was literally in Gremlins. I have to find that now. The Marilyn Monroe Gremlin. I'm pretty sure that was in Gremlins. Ugh, oh my god. <laughs> I am... Okay, I regret looking that up. I regret. <laughs> That's too... Please don't draw that. Please... Uh, I'm omitted. Please don't draw that. <laughs> Please don't. I don't... I don't want that. <laughs> no. Well, all right. Look, if if Ichthalian wants it, that's fine. It'll it'll turn out to be his uh, picture that's on <laughs> Wink Wonk. It, it'll be uh, it'll turn into his picture on stream at that point, undercover. This became cursed quickly. It was bound to happen. <clears throat> yes, yes, I will. I will. Uh, I will organize it so. Um, it's a slideshow for Mist, <laughs> and it'll alternate between his like super, super intimidated, super intimidating Hero Forge picture, and then to his Marilyn Monroe uh, skirt blowing in a sewer vent picture. <laughs> I think I could do that. Here, yeah, I've got everything divided up in like folders and stuff on OBS, so. Yeah, fan art for, for wins would be, would be awesome. Hey, Luca, thank you for the raid. What were you, uh, what were you playing? We're just on a, a brief break. You know, it's not about the size. It's the motion of the raid raid ocean. Conan Exiles. I have yet to revisit Conan Exiles. I should at some point in time. Raid Bussy. Mind numbing battle pass stuff. Well, at least you can get it unlocked. You've basically just said to do it. <laughs> Jesus. I hope you're having fun, Luca. Um, remember, just have fun. That's all. Just have fun. Uh, I have shifted my mindset for sure when it comes to, to streaming. I just want to have fun and stream. And I have a lot of fun DMing, so um, yeah. So yeah. Oh, they didn't patch that? I thought they had patched that. Or you can't... Whatever. Yeah, if... if I thought you had to buy the Battle Pass separately anyway, so if they make you buy it, then whatever. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay, wait. Yeah, I... 
usually talk a bit when we're on our breaks. You do gotta buy it. Yeah, then they should just allow you to cheese it then anyway. And it's usually better to mute the stream. I wish th this is one thing that I wish I could. Um, well, I, th I think I could do it through a bot on Discord to make it a little bit easier is I can um, link the music that I'm playing on stream to my Discorders in case you want to listen in on that as well. Um, I might just like upload it to the channel just so you all can have it. It is like my idol music. And it's super chill and I like it, even though it's probably really low in the background. I still like having something in the background. <sighs> OK, I think we'll get back into it. Um, we'll get like one or two more minutes. Uh, yes, it is for for this group, Rin, um, we play pretty late, but it's Friday, so um, yeah, yeah, it's 1.44 a.m. on the East Coast. The tomorrow's group will be a little bit earlier. Um, I have to remind myself as far as when that Discord event is. That would be 10 p.m. EST, which is a little bit better. <laughs> um, and then my third group, which will be next week, will be at 9 p.m. Um, but we have to do this a little bit differently because uh, one of our players is on the West Coast and has uh, responsibilities, which is fine. <laughs> what I am, I'm just happy to have some guys. That, yeah, yeah, we're up. We're up late. <laughs> you see, I am a vampire. Exhaling, you are a vampire. You work night shift. All right. Did everyone have a good pee pee? Got me a new PBR. Hell yeah. Brother. Oh, God. <laughs> Listen, Ow. I I grew up in Ichthalian's Nick of the Woods, so I don't need more of that in my life. That's the first beer we ever had. You know, you got that old Paps Blue Ribbon. You get, get that stuff. You usually got to get, you know, your older your older cousin or somebody to get that shit for you know you bring them on down and get you some that oh, the, i grew, grew up central fucking america i know exactly all that stuff i know the worst of it i was gonna say just the appalachia area with moonshine you want to go blind that's where it's at the, what was it a while back there was a fire nearby and uh, oh yeah got to figure out what started and like oh no we know what it was a moonshine <laughs> distilled fucking blew up yep yeah i was gonna say everybody oh. knows that at Jeez, least my... they didn't go blind <laughs> god my mom used to make moonshine in the room i grew up in the middle oh of the woods my god. <laughs> That is so redneck. When I moved out and went to college and she married my stepdad, they turned my room into a distill. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you legally say that? <laughs> uh, yeah, because as long as she didn't sell it in North Carolina. That's true. Legal. Still got some apple pie downstairs. Well, they, I think I might have you. Well, maybe not on the PBR front. Murder. But uh, drugs are a really big thing. It's and aggressively uh, what was it? it actually happened a few years ago, but there was a woman that just went into Walmart, started grabbing a bunch of supplies, and started trying to make meth in the store. Oh. I mean, she just did not waste time. No, she didn't. I guess she was pretty much nearly finished. Everyone was like, it smells like cat piss in the store. Why? Oh, so no. it attracted a bunch of attention. It's so wow. efficient. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. That's Cut just... out the middleman, don't even buy the supplies. Just get it in the store and make it. That's just that's just trying to use your time wisely. <laughs> <laughs> Cut down them travel costs and everything. I don't need a lab, the lab is right here. <laughs> Jesse, we gotta cook. <laughs> oh man. 
All right, I guess let's uh, let's pick back up. So, um, for those of you thirteen and under, we're talking about toast, cooking toast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we said math, math. Do your homework, she was, kids. She was, she was learning how to do math. That's what it was. Forgot her school books. Yeah. School. So, uh, the two of you have pulled in a pretty good hunting haul and are bringing it back into at least close to the boisterous bar. Now, there are some places outside that you can um, set up the skins for tanning and, and, uh, It'll obviously be outside. You'd have to makeshift something. It wouldn't be super, super easy. But, um, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to process skins unless you are uh, selling them off directly to someone who could, uh, who has like a shop set up. Um, same thing with the meat. Um, you want to make sure that it, it is properly preserved in some way, shape, or form. But the Boisterous Bar does have a full kitchen. So, you know, even if um, you kind of say, hey, someone that works there maybe a, a team member uh, wants to <laughs> store it in some way obviously you know it's a little bit more easily done there yeah um i think i give like all the skin <laughs> to asher and then kind of take a few of the choicest pieces and give to all of you know mist atrin asher and then the rest of it um selling to the boisterous bard for for them to make meals with okay and that that works obviously you can um easily trade a lot of this uh meat that you have for um you know room and board uh or anything of like that because it was a, it was a pretty big yeah it was a pretty big deer that you you brought back so you all had your hands full you probably smell a little bit from it but um you know, most of the, the nasty stuff was washed off when you kind of doused off in the river, but you did kind of pull back, you know, two huge haunches of, of meat and some, some like, flank meat as well. So, um, you know, you're probably not the cleanest at this point in time, um, so you can obviously get a little bit more washed up in a little bit more of a, um, I don't want to say civilized manner because it just is what it is. There's, there's like a, a bathroom essentially you could wash up in, in the uh, no, she's the bug house. she's just licking her arms. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> Fucking wild child here. <laughs> Have a good one, Ren. Oh, oh very uh, line of you. I'm sure I'd probably go to the bathroom, try and tidy up a little bit, wash my hands, and you know. Trying, I, I probably have some skill at washing off the blood and stuff, so know where to look, know what to use, clean myself up a little bit. It's soap. You just you use soap. Or I'd find a large cat lady and be like, hey, can you lick this off? Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Well, well. <laughs> Get a room. <laughs> right, for those of you 13 and under, I have nothing for this. <laughs> yeah, we, uh... <laughs> Actually, you know, now that I think about it, um, after after our romp through the sewers, once we got back, I probably actually went and found a freaking bath. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah let's find a bath out. <clears throat> Where, where's our spa episode? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you make a, a bathhouse? Oh, yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saving money for. We're making a bathhouse. I'm making a bathhouse. I don't care if anyone else helps me or not. That, that's, that's what's happening. <laughs> I I'm think in. I think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty good, not necessarily even just a front, just a, a, a renewable business for you all in this particular city, because I don't have one planned as a DM right now. I could make one up, but why don't you guys make one and that be your hideout? Dude, and my name is Mist. It's already perfect. There you go. <laughs> good to me all right so as Saskia likes the water so yeah she doesn't mind being in it for a cat new bold letters at top of notes new life goal make bathhouse <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. so as uh as the the night starts to kind of settle in uh, obviously, everybody kind of reconvenes at the uh, the boisterous bar. Now everything is is in an uptick at this point in time. Um, the the 
host and hostess at the front door greet whomever comes in and uh, you know that at least from being there uh, quite regularly that it does get busier at night there's typically a lot more performances at night um, and uh, bards from pretty much everywhere like to get gigs at this location because um, unless they're like super super pretentious which it really all depends on who you follow if you have like a, a favorite bard as as your character um, you know for the most part the boisterous bard is like the every person's uh, tavern so it has all all kind of walks of life for um, musical taste when when it comes to any kind of like uh, band or bard that comes through um, it's not really settled on one particular genre so to speak um, but it's definitely not pretentious it is just uh, it's relatively fun um, never never anything that feels too serious so you have a lot of people that just enjoy the tunes have fun with their nights um, it is uh, a bar that doesn't take itself too seriously, uh, but just serious enough to keep out any kind of massive trouble. <clears throat> uh, but as the, the night kind of upticks, you can notice that there's a lot of uh, a lot of of the masks floating about uh, participants in, in the Lord of the Falls basically day celebration, at least today. That celebration it does go on for a week but um, this is kind of like the start so everybody's kind of super excited um, it's it's like um, you know people ramping up for the, the first week of Halloween or something of that nature where everybody's like oh I'm getting super pumped you know you start to see more and more celebrants and uh, you know, everybody's just starting to have a good time it's it's all starting to kick in so um, it's a little bit different the scene but for the most part the uh, the, the vibe is still the same in, in the boisterous part. Altogether nice, um, pretty fun. Not too loud, but just loud enough. And uh, like for, for Artrin, so to speak, you can you can f still find that quieter uh, corner uh, to kind of whittle. And uh, what, what uh, minis have you conjured up today in your time waiting for your, your other teammates to come home, uh, well, home or back? <laughs> Call it home. It's good. Uh, I'd like to think that uh, I started just kind of whittling like random people, like some of the bards, just performing, just little figurines of them. I also want to whittle from some of the masks I've seen walk around a little mask for the rat that I have. Oh shit! Give him, give him a little mask, you know, because why not? Um, and then I actually have a statue that I work on of Muhammad, um, just kind of that requires like an insane amount of detail so that's more of a focus like long term kind of carve rather than everything else is kind of a quick little thing okay cool uh your your rat friend is definitely going to wear that tonight <laughs> little little rat dude with a friggin uh, lord of the fall mask on I dig it just wait until we find yeah. a druid to cast awaken on this uh on this rat <laughs> Hey, I'm walking here. It's, it's, uh, it's like oh, I liked God. you. I liked you better when you didn't speak. You were way cuter at that point in time. Uh, but yeah, um, the you, you do notice that. Uh, um, well, I guess Mist, you you do notice that uh, Asher and Saskia are re-entering the area as well. Um, and Archer, you you do notice, but you know you you kind of. You're kind of feeling it at this point in time to continue to carve until uh, until you decide whether or not you're wanting to go to the, the uh, celebration. Um, I think Saskia comes in, drops off a little piece of meat, probably just like um, a tenderloin or something that's been salted and wrapped up in leaves to each of them. And then um, when she's stopped by mist, the kind of like lowers herself down a little bit towards his level and and just asks him, hey, I noticed that you were talking more about um, what you're planning to do next. And um, since I'm kind of like your hired freelancer, I'd love to know more about what your plans are. Well, 
you see, I, I just had a new plan that came up uh, that, that, that I did, and, and, and I think a, f a future goal might be to start a bathhouse, actually. <laughs> um, so that's that's definitely on the list. Um, also, by the way, I have this for you. This came in. I'm going to hand the... Uh, Um, but other than that, uh, our future plans is we have a bounty. So if you are game for uh, chasing our quarry, we it seems we have a name to who we hunt now. Yes, I'm very interested in hunting a quarry. <laughs> um, and she also grabs the letter and then looks like very concerned. It is uh, definitely in the style of home. Uh, you recognize just being who you are and being from that neck of the woods, um, the flora that is used to wrap the the note, um, aside from the, the, the clean leather, the, uh, the flora itself is very familiar to home to you. So you kind of assume it's from family. I think she's looking a little panicked and kind of just like holds it to her chest and kind of like stares off in the distance, kind of forgetting that she was even having a conversation with Mist. Mist will look at you concerned, but will but will leave you to your thoughts for the moment. It's definitely obvious that the mood has shifted. At least with, with Saskia. Do, do you need to talk about anything, Saskia? He kind of like looks back at him as if just like, oh yeah, shit, I was talking to somebody. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then just kind of awkwardly says, uh, I'm not, I'm not really sure yet. I think I need to look at this. And then she she kind of like heads off to her quieter area in the bar to take a look at the letter. I'll motion her over towards me. <laughs> She'll join Atron at the other side of his table. It is pretty quiet there. And I'll go make some tea. All right. Well, um, yeah. Well, you tell me what kind of tea you're wanting to make and we will determine what what can come from that and uh saskia you're wanting to open your letter now yeah okay uh, as you unfold the letter obviously the the vine itself um as i was stating before it, it is definitely unique to the territory that you're used to um because it's not a typical vine where if you pull it too taut it'll it'll just snap or break like the fibers are actually very very resilient and almost like it's pre pre-woven rope that's how the, these vines feel and you're very familiar with them because you use them back home after you untie that and kind of set it aside or even pocket it in a um you know almost like a remembrance of missing home uh the letter that's revealed underneath the leather that's there um is a note from your family um and it's actually direct from your grandfather um and he's noting that um somewhat very soon um he's gonna need some more medicine um and he gives you a name of an individual that i'll reveal later um that you can actually get some of this um, uh, this medicine from that's local in town. And, uh, he'll need it back at some point in time fairly soon because the previous, uh, shipment that he had gotten from Salas, uh, made him sick for some reason. Oh. Okay. It looks very solemn after reading that and um, plans to, if she doesn't know exactly who the person is, 
to ask around to fi figure out who that is. Uh, you, you get the name. It's it's Lily Littlefoot, but you're not entirely sure who they are. I, I don't think you've basically perused enough in the city at this point in time to know who they are. But, um, it seems to be someone that should be known in town for the most part. Like you can just assume if if your your grandfather got the name somehow, he okay. must have found out. Uh, through some kind of like public notice or someone that told him that visited um, so it, it it isn't something that he was trying to like oh you have to find this individual that's hidden or anything of that nature you might be able to ask uh, around in the in the tavern and figure out who that individual is okay I think for now she's just kind of like sitting there thinking about it in the in the I guess the uh, the voice of the letter was obviously it's concerning to you it didn't seem like he was um, like in an emergency uh, situation it obviously came by letter um, not entirely sure how uh, obviously it missed had it so you're not entirely sure how it was received to, to begin with uh, but it doesn't seem like it was like you know someone came in running in like oh this needs to be delivered immediately um, you know, it, it's an emergency or anything of that nature. It just seems like it's a, a fairly casual letter, but your your grandfather could be downplaying it. You know, it could be one of those, I just want to make sure she doesn't freak out, even though, I, you know, I could be pretty sick. Or uh, there's been times in the past where you feel like your grandfather has probably hid more of the severity of the situation just to make sure that you weren't um, alarmed or felt like you had to immediately put yourself in danger for him so he kind of you know that that's happened in the past after the fact <clears throat> uh, but alongside on, on the back side of that particular letter almost like a, a an extra sheet of paper um, there is uh, an ingredients list that was that was listed uh, for this particular individual and most of the components look like herbs uh, some of them you recognize some of them you you don't um, they probably are of a more arcane nature but uh, some of the herbs are pretty common and then you have a mix of things that you're not entirely sure uh, where you can get them from okay she folds that up carefully and, and keeps it in a safe pocket in her backpack. Okay. Uh, Asher, let me answer. Hold on, let me read your stuff real quick. Oh. Ready? <clears throat> I would say uh the that individual wasn't seeking audience uh currently um so you were not able to pay them a visit okay well if i could just like leave a note or such something okay uh some sort of some sort of notice that at least i went by yeah you can um you can you can you can do that yeah okay yeah then I'm, I'm good I, i'd start uh okay as everybody starts to reconvene back into the uh the area um obviously missed what kind of teas were you wanting to make were they for yourself and your party or was this just in general for uh any of the the patrons uh this would be for the party and honestly with more of a focus on uh saskia since i saw the di kind of this distress so i was focusing um i don't know what what ingredients you would have in mind for, for the game world but my focus idea here was something soothing and calming uh with, with clarity like uh, i was thinking something with like a minty flavor maybe a hint of lime thinking think mo like a mojito with just a slight hint of green tea and lime <laughs> alcoholic or non-alcoholic <laughs> um think virgin mojito <laughs> okay. Because I'm, so, I'm still going with tea. 
Gotcha. I was gonna say, you're gonna get the cat wasted. Yeah, no, not quite. I'm just like, that's just the flavor profile I'm going for. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, you can you can definitely make something like that. Um, and we can come up with some more clever names uh, in a little while. But yes, you, you can find the, the flavor profiles of essentially like a very minty, uh, lemony type hot tea. Um, it almost, you know, to some people it may... Um, I'm trying to think. I have like a, a a gingery approach as it as it goes down. A little bit spicy, but it's very very clearing and um, refreshing. Um, but yes, you can spend some time make that and then uh, bring out a pot of it if you so choose uh, to the to the table. Oh, absolutely. And this will take you a little bit of time. So by that time, Artrin has finished his little mask for uh, his furry friend. And Saskia has uh, already read her letter from her grandfather. And I would say at that point in time, Asher's probably entering in fashionably late. My God, be careful going outside, everybody. There's people out there. That's how I would come back and introduce myself. Meanwhile, surrounded by a, a bar full of people. <laughs> Yeah. So I'd go into the bar, walk around, find everybody, sit down, ask if there's enough tea. I would like some tea. Tea is delicious. I'd like to imagine it's one of those big teapots that I bring out that have like the flower actually floating in it that, that I sit down that you can serve from that. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I love tea, by the way. So like I have my own like teapot and shit. I am. I, I love it because it is very like zen to a degree. Just going through that process. Uh, so I am all about. If you want to go ham about it, miss making tea, by all means, go for it. Oh, absolutely. I don't say it. Whenever I see the paw with the big flower in it, like Miss, you're not gonna believe this. Someone threw a fucking flower in here. Don't worry, <laughs> I'll fish it out. I got your buddy. I just look at it so, so astonished. Go, oh my gosh, there is one in there. Who would do that? That's a terrible thing to do. I mean, the the, the flower it'll wilt. It says you better drink it before the flower wilts. It it'll, it'll, the flavor will get in there and everything. It's, it's it, 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 it'll be terrible. You got the, the trick is to drink it before the flower wilts. I would say, Miss, just give me the. Those little uh, toothpick things you like to eat with, and I'll just pluck it out real quick. I got this, buddy. Just hand them over to me. I'm over use my nails and just grab it out and put it in my cup. <laughs> you you get Problem the most solved. potent cup, <laughs> Artrin. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you took the tea bag out and then just put it only in your in your tea cup. <laughs> it can't be rude if it came with a flower. You gotta drink it. That's true. Now everybody gets hot water. It's it it. I would say it's steeped enough that you you get a uh, a very good uh, taste of the product. Archer is just gonna be sucking down some pure flavor at this point in time. Hey, it's trying oh. to be polite, man. Hint of cat mint, delicious. Hmm. Oh wow! Wait, did did I use catnip as an ingredient in this? <laughs> oh <laughs> no! <laughs> I do have a tea here in my house right now called Fairy's Kiss that does in fact use catnip. Uh oh. Yeah, catnip is a a mint, and it is delicious. <laughs> we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to expand upon that later. Okay. <laughs> Giving meth to our 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 cat. Oh my goodness. Okay. So a after some time, you all get to partake into the, the tea. You enjoy this the sights and sounds. The um, the boisterous bar doesn't assume it's going to be the uh, the star of the show tonight, at least during the celebration time. So there is an announcement that Lucas, uh, the tiefling that owns boisterous bar walks down from his uh, office on the second floor and announces to everyone that 
you know it's it's closing time or it's closing to be uh, close to the time of the celebration out in the ossuary if you are staying with us uh, i appreciate it if you are partaking in the celebration uh, we have warm beds uh, if you so choose to come back and stay with us so enjoy the night and the celebrations that are happening throughout the week and after that he you know, takes his leave back upstairs and with a smile that showmanship smile you know greets everyone and says goodbye in the same fashion and goes back up to his dealings upstairs Oh, I, I, uh, uh, I will tag no. along if others are going, but I will not go myself. The <laughs> nod. She would like a distraction. I'm gonna go just to go, I guess. Not into it, but not against it, I guess. Just going. <laughs> then we go as a group, and I look at Mist. I shake my head yes i will get up and i guess lead the way to the door and open it for everybody perfect before standing up uh, the the meat that saskia gave me is it is it just salted raw or is it like dried uh, i don't think there was enough time to dry it but i think it's salted enough to be um what is it called like Weird. preserved or yeah something. okay yeah so i'll i'll take that as a little snack as we go but I want to hold it with two of my fingers and then just use a little bit of fire and cook it a little bit more okay you could do that over the over the um the fireplace in the in the bard before you go can I use my my breath weapon and because I I can shoot fire (laughs) yeah right right there just want to (laughs) boosh what the heck pyrotechnics yeah, a little puffball of heat to warm it up and, and cook a little bit, and then I'll just eat it. <laughs> All right, oh let's my fair. gosh, he's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dragon. <laughs> I never knew this whole time, but now it's all so clear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, Diane, I am surprised. <laughs> He's gonna cook it, and then he's gonna cook me. Yeah. <laughs> so with all that, I'll be like, I'll stand up after chewing it up and eat it, and be like, I, I'm ready to go. And you guys make your way to uh, essentially the ossuary. Now you you notice that as you're exiting, there are some other people that exit as well. But I think some people, at least because this is just the starting of the the celebration, the uh, you know most people are still wanting to get drunk. They're not they're not going out just yet. To, to do their thing uh, because the celebration is going to take place throughout the week this is just kind of the first starting day and, it, and obviously if you've never experienced it before it might be something good to kind of dabble into or at least see what the people of Salas kind of do um, when it comes to some of their local holidays or at least recognized holidays <clears throat> uh, the crowds of individuals that that are partaking are kind of spread here and there um it's not like a huge huge massive rush it is still a night crowd uh but there are like handfuls of people that are traveling at the same time some of them wearing celebratory masks some of them not um some of them have flowers and whatnot that are uh semi wilting and um and basically on their last stint of uh life so to speak but uh it, it seems to be a common thing of like some wilting flowers um, that are are being brought along with a lot of people to the ossuary as you all make your way there, and uh, there are plenty of signs and la- the, those paper lanterns lit to lead the way, and you could follow the, the semi crowds to begin with too. Um, but as you make it, you you notice that the uh, the ossuary itself, which is essentially just a, a large cemetery area, is. Uh, is full of those paper lanterns it's lit up significantly more than what it used to be um which i mean if you've ever passed by any cemetery typically it's just 
not lit up at all. Um, maybe some of the paths are, but um, for the most part it's not lit up like this. But you can see new life is kind of brought to this particular area with a lot of different uh, uh, broken fronds of, of uh, leaves from trees and surrounding other flora um, that are that are put on uh, certain gates um, that uh, and entrances to the ossuary as well as uh, near some of the um, the gravestones and whatnot just as decoration to represent the fall um, as it were <clears throat> and in the middle you definitely notice a uh, a depiction of uh, the Lord of the Fall, which is a very largely shaped individual, um, at least the figure is fairly large, standing probably about, you know, at least this effigy is basically about, um, let's say 12 to 15 feet tall, um, and made of, made of sticks, and it's in a centralized area where, um, you know, there's no gravestones located or anything of that nature. And um, it's made to look like it has armor on, as well as like a, a skull face. And um, you notice that there's just a, a large crowd that is is kind of like sitting nearby some of the uh, the plots, um, maybe uh, near loved ones that have passed, and um, kind of just enjoying each other's company as they uh, occasionally look to the effigy and. Uh, see if anything has changed with that particular scenario but you all are allowed to like walk around and take in the sights and do what you will um but a lot of it is the same um you notice that there's just a lot of individuals uh visiting grave sites and locations that presumably have family members or at least known friends um some kind of relation uh to that individual and uh, they don't seem to be sad. It, it actually seems to be a very uh, happy occasion where they're they're visiting the people that they once had in their lives in this realm. Um, is there like a <clears throat> main like offering table or anything like that? It all seems to be like laid out in front of each individual location. Um, there there doesn't seem to be uh, too many like areas that are grossly um collected with with like offerings but there are some that are scattered around that middle effigy mostly okay. it's like um uh, the, the, the wilting flowers you have some foods that are presented as well uh, but it's mostly things that look like they are uh transitioning to to dying essentially I think uh, Saskia would go and place the antlers from the deer at the um, at the area. Okay, yeah, and um, you know, as you place it, you kind of nestle it up against some of the other offerings that are there. But um, there is a there's obviously a, a significance to it as as people just kind of smile and genuinely so smile at you as you kind of place that offering and. Um, some seem more thankful than others. Some seem like just like entertained that everybody's having a good time, but you notice that nobody really stops you. There's agency members, which are the police essentially around in the city that are there to monitor and make sure nobody causes any, any trouble. But obviously they're letting everybody kind of make their offerings, whatever offerings that they are, um, to that, that main effigy, uh, before like a big event happens. She's doing that. I just want to walk up and in front of it uh, mm. and give a little respectful bow. And you see, some some people do the same. It's not exactly the same as you, um, just because it's um, obviously it's a it's a form of respect uh, from your side of things, especially given your upbringing. But um, the uh, most most people are, um, you know, doing a kneel, placing an offering. Uh, but it's obviously people people see that you are presenting yourself in such a way to respect something that you may not even uh, participate normally. But um, you know, you, you you get some of the individuals that are enjoying their time frame 
uh, you know, glancing your way and and smiling as you do so. I'd like to think through all of this. Uh, Asher's pretty quiet, but still wears a smile and uh, just walks by the offering. Doesn't acknowledge it, doesn't show anything. In the graveyard, though, he might walk around, look at the tombstone, read the names. Other than that, he's pretty quiet, just along with the group. On your way rocking around a lot of the other gravestones, you do happen to catch a pretty sweet recipe for a sweet roll. So, you know, you're kind of the winner here at this point in time. Oh, hell yeah. Wait, it, was it an offering or did I just actually find it? No, it's so, it's inscribed on someone's tombstone. Okay. I'm not a very good cook, but I do try and take good notes about it. And I go, I'm going to see if Mist make this. This will be good. <laughs> Um, I think Mist would probably put some some flowers that would be used in some teas in the offering. But otherwise, he would probably follow <laughs> around. He, he, I'd honestly probably follow Asher a little bit uh, and, and just watch what he does because he's been pretty entertaining up to this point anyways. <laughs> well, he, uh, he obviously found something that is uh he he wants to some degree so you may be making sweet rolls soon according to this particular uh recipe okay so being the rogue that i am what would i have to do to see if i could uh catch miss see him and then hide somewhere and then surprise him uh well just roll roll stealth um <laughs> so <laughs> and then i will have uh missed oppose with the perception check Oh, 24. Oh my god. Well, I rolled no. a natural one, <laughs> so that uh, that inspiration with a, a d6 isn't going to matter. No, no, you could save it. Oh, that's funny. Uh, okay. uh, unless you're doing inspiration uh, in the 5th the edition style where we just re-roll and take the, the higher number, or the higher roll. It would be, it would be advantage, right? Yeah, yeah. D- d- we'll just do advantage instead. It makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that you can award inspiration and you spend it to just re-roll the dice. I think that's another thing. And you don't have to obviously spend it here. Uh, I- I'm not going to, but I-, I almost want to just to just to see what happens. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I completely lose him. I- I- I'm I'm looking at gravestones now too. I, I left the flower. Um, I'm watching the event because it's very different, or it's a little different here than things go back home. So I'm kind of fascinated and. My eyes are kind of just darting everywhere. I'm reading tombstones. I'm looking at people, and and then I completely lose lose Asher. And I'm like, huh, hmm, where did he go? Now I'm just tripping over rocks and things, being clumsy. I would like to think: Would the graveyard have these, or uh... would they have what? I'm sorry, I cut out a little would bit. They, would the graves and stuff in it? It's still, like, it's still cut out again. I'm sorry. What trees? Would it have trees, shrubbery, or like oh, anything? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So like, th- there would still be uh, some, some like uh, bushes, trees, things of that nature located throughout the the actual um, site. It's not just like a barren, um, just graves only. They try to decorate it pretty well. So yeah, you'd be able to to do what you will with a lot of that shrubbery. I would like to climb a tree and wait and just wait until I know mist walks under or around it or near it, shimmy back down the tree and stand on one side and use my tail and poke his shoulder on the other side so he looks and then I'd be like, I found something really effing cool. You're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to check this out and then I want to hand him like scribbles and I have bad handwriting anyways and some of the words are misspelled but I'd be like, this is gonna be good. We gotta make this. <laughs> All right, so you you can roll if you want, it, it, unless you have a specific way that Mist would actually react. Um, it, it's up to you, Mist. I'm not gonna like force your RP. I was but, like, what would I what would I roll for it? I, I'm gonna say your previous stealth roll is plenty plenty good for this. 
Oh, okay. Um, so so you want to roll to see if he like taps me on the shoulder? Is that what it is? No, it, like your reaction. Do you think Miss would be rattled? Would he do something in reactivity? Because you totally lost him. Is is he someone that would like shriek <laughs> because somebody <laughs> caught you off guard or? I um I'm actually consider I'm actually about to uh, flip a coin. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Heads, uh, I keep my I keep my head uh, about me. Tails, um, uh, I might actually draw a weapon because <laughs> I was gonna say stealth, stealth is also kind of my thing, and getting the drop on me might kind of shake my nerves a little bit. You take a solid punch to the gut. And oh, those first three rolls. That is actually heads. I'm oh. going to I'm going to try and play it off as if I as if nothing was awry. There we go. So yeah, you, you obviously uh, you've lost him for quite some time, and then all of a sudden you you know you get the whole look left, look right thing, and he's right there. Um, and as much as you wanted to like go assassin mode, you keep yourself in check. You, you you don't cause violence in 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 a uh, in a festival that's happening right now, and then he hands you what looks to be like a doctor's excuse for work, where it's just scribbled and you're not entirely sure what it may say. I uh, I calm my key. I was about to pop a flurry of blows, pull out some sai, pull out a uh, uh, like a like a, a wakizashi of my size katana at this point. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Into the nose, out through the mouth. Oh, a, a, a note. What? What? What did you find? What? What? What is this? What is this? So check it out. I was looking on these gravestones, reading the names, and I found this bad boy. It sounds like it's going to be delicious. We got to make some. Did By we, I mean you, because I don't know. How. I'm happy to help. Asher, did you steal someone's sweet roll? Would I do that? I just licked my lips a few times ago. I, we have got to make this. <laughs> I'll look at him and go, I didn't steal it, but it, you know, if it was on someone's person, I would have stole it. This was just happened to be out in the open, though. <laughs> I just sure shrug free. my shoulders. No, <laughs> I just shrug my shoulders and go, that's fair. That, that That's fair. That it is. And then I fold it up and put it in my, uh, in my, my uh, uh, arm pocket, robe pocket thing. Okay. Work. Words apparently fail me tonight. <laughs> I want to give him a yeah, and then uh, I guess just continue looking, walking around looking at tombstones and the stuff. Sleeve, sleeve. That's the word. <laughs> I can hear your wife in the background. Sleeve, sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's actually engrossed watching Disney. <laughs> you you got a coach back there? What's happening? <laughs> cheating at D&D uh, after some time obviously you all get to partake in the sights and um, again people watch and it seems to be a pretty joyous occasion the uh, um, the there's like a, a like a bell like that struck and it is obviously close to the middle of that where the effigy is at and uh, so one of the agency members comes out with a torch and Burning Man style, you know, lights it on fire, and um, you know all the uh, all the offerings. You can see some of the individuals come back up to where their offering was and kind of throw it into where the uh, the fire has has started to kind of blaze up. And um, you all can do the same if you want, just as a like an offering, you know. Uh, but they. Uh, once an individual has taken their own offering and tossed it in, they go back to where they were sitting and kind of enjoy the warmth of the fire um, on the relatively cooler fall uh, fall weather and uh, watch as, um, you know, things come to an end. And I think I find it all very lovely. When everyone throws some stuff in the air, I want to pick up some leaves and throw it in the air too and be like, yeah. 
<laughs> Yay! <laughs> you did it! Good job. I'm a big participant. Can't help but sense some sarcasm in your voice. What? No. But after after the the fire dies down and uh, some of it the, like the pedestal where the effigy was burned is the large very large pedestal is is kind of cleared off. Uh, so so you know after so much time people start clearing out and you all can kind of filter back to where you're at uh, or where you where you came back from um, and it it at least ton uh, tonight um, despite. The things that may have happened uh, in the hours beforehand, you feel a little bit more at peace. It it feels like there is purpose to the things that you're doing. Um, and even though, obviously, life gets difficult at times, uh, you understand that there, there's... There are going to be difficult things um and that life does have an ending at least in that current time frame and in order to make things the best that you can um you have to cherish every little bit of it um and uh it kind of puts you at ease you, you had a nice tea you had a nice evening it's something that took you away from the the grittiness of what you're currently trying to do and uh, when you get back to uh, the boisterous bar, despite some of the revelries that are happening, you you have a really good night's sleep. So, what I will do is we are going to say that there is a not an extended period of time that passes. Um, there is a. Um, somewhat significant i would say a week two weeks that pass and we'll discuss that now um but i will give you guys a level um you can tell me how you spend it either now or later uh whatever you see fit um i mostly do um what is it called not not experience points the uh the other milestone. method milestone thank you very much um, I mostly do milestones, but I like to have a lot of that time justified in some way, shape, or form. So if you somehow invest in a new skill uh, or something of that nature, just try to justify it through RP means. Um, I don't mind rushing the training a little bit, uh, as it were. But obviously, things are going to happen within that, say, one week time frame as you all are trying to organize your thoughts and get stuff together, uh, where you maybe dedicate a little bit of time to things that are outside of the scope of what you're currently trying to address. Um, and, uh, you know, we can go into those, those changes as it were. Um, but yeah, for the most part, every, everybody will probably be communicated with me in some way, shape or form about things that are happening. Um, just so you know, things that are happening to you, uh, or with you in some way, shape, or form that I might not be able to go on on stream because I don't want to reveal too much to everybody. Um, but like Saskia, for instance, I have something specifically for you, not, the letter withstanding, um, and we can go over like in the idle time frame that we've had so far, especially within that week, if there's anything within the city you would like to do or address uh, while we have some time tonight. Okay. Um, did you want to just do that in like uh, messages later on? Um, yeah, we can we can all do that in messages. If so, oh, okay. if everyone has something that they would like to try to accomplish, whether it be trying to gather info or finding out something or whatever it may be, or um, trying to organize whatever whatever task that you may have at hand, as well as concepts for what you're going to be doing for your level up um during that one week time frame that we have quote unquote downtime on um you're more than welcome to discuss that with me now if you feel like you want to do that in private we can always shoot messages back and forth later too yeah i think i'll probably do that since it's it's a little late and i think i don't know if you were tired already anyway 
<laughs> so I'll save you from that. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can talk about it later and then discuss for next time. Okay. Uh, Miss, during that downtime, did you have anything in mind as well? I know that for probably all of us here, um, you'll probably want to think about where your next level is going to go in one way, shape, or form. Um, if it does have any kind of significant impact, so I'm not necessarily expecting that, but if there's any kind of like research or uh, information you're trying to gather or anything of that nature now, we can say that it is basically taking place during this one week. Good news, most most people at level four, they don't get a whole lot. It's mostly an ability score increase, uh, but yeah. there is the options for feats that do require research. However, in Mist's case in particular, um, aside from basic normal everyday training mantra kind of stuff uh absolutely doing some surveying looking for potential places for this bathhouse <laughs> all right that's fair it would totally be like a bathhouse maybe like a little like tea to be served with it you know tea with the bath like a nice hot springies kind of soak sort of deal but absolutely freaking really this i mean on top of maybe looking for more potential bounties to hunt down for funds to start said bathhouse but yes that's that's that one. okay all right well we'll we'll prep that behind the scenes as well i think um because you could probably have some starter funds uh because of your connections but we can we can go into specifics and come up with names and stuff uh probably along the the next playtime um, it would probably be safe to say that we'll take a long rest, right? Oh yeah, no, you're you're okay. you all will be uh, once we come back, which may be next game session, obviously. You guys will be full, like you'll be fine. Plenty of time to rest, plenty of time to set forward any kind of plans that you have behind the scenes, things like that. Uh, Archon, did you hit? Do you, you know of anything that you would like to accomplish too behind the scenes, at least for that one week? No, I think most of most of the stuff that Archon would do would be to assist Mist, especially in the bathhouse, because like he's he's keen on that. He wants to he wants to enjoy that, <laughs> um, and maybe finding some form of employment uh, until the bathhouse gets set up, because I can't just mooch off, and, you know, Mist. Okay, and that's fair. Yeah, we can we can discuss whatever kind of options you think is available. But obviously, woodworking may be part of that as well. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe a little stall selling selling the figurines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could definitely talk about that and and go from there. And then Asher, uh, probably I would think most of your stuff is probably behind the scenes. But is there anything overt you wouldn't, I guess, care to reveal to to individuals here about what you would want to do throughout that week? Um, being that Asher has spent a lot, a lot of time in the city, I think I'd be a good resource to be like, oh, you know, this this place is all right. These places are usually pretty good, and help kind of scope out places and possibilities. And pretty much on the side time, just uh, working, honing skills, uh, doing my behind the scenes stuff. Okay. So, and I can, um, uh, from your previous messages, I can convey to you, like what you can find out. And obviously, the last message that you sent me may change. Obviously now, um, because of the time frame that you'll have to kind of work out some information. Yeah, and like I said, as things go on, time goes on. He does idle jobs to you know pay the bills and you know, get fed. So, yeah, just, uh, he's pretty much freelance doing whatever, but does stay with the group mostly, though. Okay, yeah. Um, actually, you know what we can do? If anybody's working or needing for extra work at some point in time, we could dabble into, um, uh, the dirt pile. I don't know if you remember that from last time. It rings a oh, bell. Yeah. yeah, Stinky's dirt pile. Yeah, that sounds fun. Side quest time. <laughs> so yes, it, it as the name kind of implies, Stinky wants dirt on people, places, things, and his dirt pile is rather large because he also dabbles in some information. So 
at least in those regards. It wouldn't necessarily be total legal work, but you know, if you're down to make some good coin and help him kind of get more dirt on people, the, the dirt pile is where it's at. And just be sure, the dirt pile is strictly information. It's not uh, dirty work, like making sure people take those long dirt naps. No, not necessarily. Like, it, typically it's information. Um, it's, it's not to say that, and you know this generally for, for working in that particular area um, with him, he doesn't generally call on for wet work. Okay, yeah, I didn't think it was, but I just wanted to be sure. Yeah, he's he but, he mostly deals in information and um, items. Okay, rock and roll. Yeah, I definitely i I think Ash would work for him and uh, make a return visit and stuff. Is it, Mister R K? Weirdly enough, I think. Uh... Hey, Voltar, thanks for the follow. Did that cut out? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I feel like Mist would probably look for some of that shady um, work himself because that would keep skills sharp, but that would take a back seat to the bathhouse right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would say... Would think, I would think Mist, you and I would take like rotations on bathhouse stuff because I want to be a partner in that. What I can say is, it does occur to you, Miss, that you you did just encounter someone that has more legal work, like that can be had, and that, it may. That's kind of what I was gonna kind of like nudge, nudge, hint, hint at. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we can we can more discuss that later. Uh, but yeah, just digest some things. We'll we'll kind of call this session for right now. But I wanna to make this a little bit more regular and hopefully there's less life problems that come up that delay games and i'm talking about me not from anybody else here just just from my behalf um so yeah give it some thought see where you want to have some stuff progress we do have a lot of side streets we can go down it's not limited to what you guys are currently working on and uh yeah yeah just uh, we'll, we'll communicate uh, through messages either in the group chat or in private or whatever. Yep, let's Skyrim this. Side quests, all the things. With the side quests, you get more resources available. That's the whole point behind doing a lot of these side things is developing the resources that you have at your disposal to help with the bigger things. Avoid the main quests, like the plague. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but... Uh... Thank you all. I, I enjoy playing this and I, I love your group so much that I can't wait for more stuff to unfold for it. So I, I can't wait. We'll we'll pick out another date um, that doesn't obviously conflict with any kind of like holidays or anything of that nature. And, and we'll we'll start that up soon again. Wait, so we can we can set up our character for level four, right? Yep. Yep. Go ahead and plan for that. Oh, boy. So many feats. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, it's so much fun. I love it. Yes, absolutely. I, I, like I said, I enjoy having fun with you guys and I hope we can continue this till we get bored of everything. It is awesome. We can't get bored of everything. We're about to run a bathhouse. <laughs> Great way <laughs> to gather intel. That, yeah, 100%, that's true. It's a very clever way to, to have a little, uh, little side hustle. Jeez, a government worker doing shady work named mist on on the day of the dead gets gets the idea to make a bathhouse man this this is this is like a death house i love this this is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, can we it, call it the dead drop <laughs> oh my god yeah you can call it whatever you want it's gotta be it's gotta be clever uh i'll hang out in discord for a little bit let me end stream uh if you all want to talk a little bit more if not it's super cool um but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to make this a, a reoccurring thing where we play for at least, you know, around about three hours or so. And then we don't go five to six hours and then I'll feel like crap afterwards. <laughs> okay.
Good night, everybody. Good night, Twitch. Good night, Good chat. night, Twitch. <laughs> Good night, Good night Twitch. Twitch. Good night, Twitch chatters. All right, I'll be right back. Uh, thank you, everybody, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I'm going to call Twitch. I believe, uh, Voltar, I do have the Discord for Say or some, uh below me. I think it's listed below um, under like a link for Discord. So it may be there. I don't have any kind of Nightbot stuff set up just right now, but um, I appreciate that you're interested. It's uh, It's been a like passion project for quite some time. Uh, but anyway, everybody that stuck around, Thank you for uh, so much for showing up. Thank you for uh, just enjoying your night with us. And um, I think we're all gonna kind of relax and get some rest soon uh, after we have a little chit chat about group stuffs. But I will be streaming again tomorrow. Our second group is gonna be playing tomorrow around 10 p.m. EST. So if you're bored, wanna chill, spend some time uh, watching the other group, one of the other groups, I should say, play their side of their story uh just come on back and uh we'll see you then but until then have a good rest of your night and enjoy uh, enjoy your weekend okay bye <laughs>